these sessions, we've asked two questions. What event in Richmond history speaks the most to your personal experience in life in Richmond? And what can we do to make Richmond's history more inclusive and accessible? And in many ways, this winter series, and I hope you'll stick with us. I hope you'll stick with us for all five decades. Um, because if you, you can, we're keeping a list, and if you make all five, we have amazing gifts. <laughs> I promise, there's a wonderful book just for you if you survive all five. So we go from the 1960s to the early part of the 21st century. And I think it really is always about how can we as an institution, as a community, find ourselves in that history. Um, so what's been interesting to me is every conversation we've had over the last two years, whether it's been a 1760 conversation or 1860 conversation, it really always returns to Richmond in the 1960s and 1970s. There's just no way that you can talk about our history without that. And so uh, it was a great sort of coalescing of ideas that this is the 50th anniversary of the humanitarian awards that are given by the Virginia Center for Inclusive Communities. And so what better way than to draw from each of those five decades, individuals who received that award and that honor are to talk about their lives in that period. Not from a personal perspective, not a historian's perspective, but a personal perspective. And so that's what we're going to be doing this week. And I'm so pleased that Dr. James has agreed uh, to be with us for this evening. So the, the key information, I think, for discussion as we go through is from from your perspective, what are the key events in Richmond's history from the 1960s? We're going to do this for every decade. In the 1960s, what is the most important event? <coughs> if you were sitting in my chair or a collection folks' chair, what objects would you want us to collect? <laughs> what places? Would you want to preserve? Uh, and how would we do that? How would we tell those stories? So I think that's the, the, the first piece of the question. The second question is, is always, and it's been one that we've had in every conversation, is how do we make this history more inclusive and accessible? And every session also over the last two years has been something that's always come up, is why can't we connect all these places together in a more consistent way? Why can't people get around the city and walk to places and bike to places that we know so well, but from our perspective, sometimes they're so far away from each other. And so at some point this evening, we'll pull out a map and ask you to help us identify sites and places that we know need to be part of any Richmond experience. So we're excited to, to really talk a little bit about later on, but particularly early now. Um, <clears throat> amazing consensus emerged <coughs> And you will see um, there is going to be a map passed out this evening that at the beginning session, please know that this map is totally wrong. And it's one of the great things that's happened over the last uh, several months. When, this, when we first started talking about what does Matt Richmond look like on the map, there were no <coughs> slave sites on the official city tourism map. And so the map that we'll see, the first map that we'll see tonight is the map that, that the city was using, the tourism office was using three months ago. The map that we'll see at the end is a map that we're proposing to think about how we begin to connect all these particular sites. So that's, that's going to be, and we're not there yet, and that's why we're here for, for tonight, is sort of to think about are we really missing you know, the places and stories that we're missing. So, that's where we're going to start. So Matthew Freeman, a uh, TMI consultant, is going to see who's in the room. You know, how many people even in this room remember the 60s? <laughs> you find out. And if you do, you want to confess it. Good evening, everybody. All right, that was really sad. This is a community <laughs> conversation. It's going to be participatory. So let's try that again. Right, good evening. 
good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. That was much, much better. Thank you. So yes, as, as Bill said, um, this is a community conversation, and we have a couple of things specifically that we want to hear from y'all. So it's not just an opportunity for some people to stand up at the front and talk at you. It's also an opportunity for you to talk to us and to each other. So we're going to have some uh, fun ways of doing that, um, some creative ways. And you are going to have to talk to uh, some of your neighbors. So uh, just fair warning for those of you that are introverts. Steal yourselves now. You can go with me. <laughs> um, but the first thing we want to do is um, everybody should have had in their chair one of these uh, devices. If you could uh, pull that out, and if you didn't get one, just raise your hand. Because that means someone went around stealing them before you got in your chair. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm with TMI Consulting. We've been working with Valentine for a while. We do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, less about me, more about Joe. So this is uh, how this technology works. It's the same thing they use in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, uh, where they pull the audience, and instantly you see the answers up on the screen. Uh, they also use it in lots of universities. It's really easy. All you got to do is push the button that corresponds with your answer. That's it. You don't have to turn it on, you don't have to do anything else. Everything's anonymous, so as much as I might like to go home and find out what uh, Bill has voted, I can't. Um, they don't work at home. That one's really important to me. It's not going to help you figure out what your new payroll taxes are going to be, or what the sequestration is going to mean for you know, all the businesses around here. Uh, so please leave them here at the end of the night. And then finally, um, we're going to do some moving around the room at some points, but we're going to ask you to hold on to that um, and vote with your same keypad all evening. So hold on to it for the evening, but don't take it home. I think y'all can handle that, right? Good. So first, we're going to find out a little bit about who's here. Uh, first question is uh, gender. One for female, two for male. That is alphabetical order, in case you're wondering how I decided which one first. All right. So it may or may not be the order of superiority, that's, uh, but that's another conversation, not for this evening. So we have uh, 59 people answered, and 56% of us in the room are women, 44% are men. Um, in our region, we are, the, the region I'm using the Planning District Commission, um, nine jurisdictions that are centered around the city of Richmond, uh, we're a little bit more than half women, um, a little bit less than half men. Uh, where do you live? Which jurisdiction? These are the jurisdictions that are part of the uh, Planning District. Richmond City, one, Chesterfield, two, Enrico, three, Hanover, four, Ashland, Charles City, Goochland, New Camp, or Powhatan, five, or somewhere else, number six. All right, so we are a city crowd this evening. 78% of us live in the city, 10% uh, Chesterfield, 5% Henrico, 3% Hanover, and 3% Ashland, and no, or Charles City, Goochland, New Camp, Powhatan, and nobody else from other. Uh, you can see the population spread from the uh, 2010 census. 20% of our region's population lives in the city. So we're a little overrepresented in the city. But that's all right. Uh, what's your racial or ethnic group? This is uh, more or less based on the last census categories. apparently, there's a tattoo gallery uh, just next door, so we wanted to find out about y'all. Do you have tattoos? One, are you kidding? No. Yes, they're hidden beneath my clothes so you can't see them. Three, yes, in plain sight, which I guess in winter time means they're on your hands or your face. Um, four, have you seen my sleeve? And if you don't know what a sleeve is, you don't have one. <laughs> All right, so 75% of this group does not have tattoos. 2%, um, uh, which would be, I guess, one person does claim to have a sleeve, so I'll be wanting to see that before I leave, see how honest you all are. 19%, uh, we can wonder who the 19% are that have tattoos hidden beneath their clothes. So. And then uh, I think this is our last question of who's here this evening. Uh, what, what decade were you born? 
This is anonymous, you don't, and you can hide it. It's a very powerful, you don't have to point it anywhere, so you don't have to let your neighbor see it, which answer you get. And if you make a mistake, uh, you can just press the button you meant to. It doesn't matter, it just records your last one. Which deck do we run? 62 answers, the match number. All right, so we actually have people from uh, represented from all of the decades, um, from the 30s or earlier all the way to the 90s and later. Our biggest group was born in the 80s, 37%, uh, uh, followed by 16% in the uh, in the 70s, 19% in the 50s. So we actually have a pretty good uh, pretty good spread here. All right, so now you had an index card also in your seat. And what we want to invite you to do, um, and Cara, if you could um, hand out pens. If you need a pen, we're going to ask you to write. If you'd raise your hand and Cara will come around, uh, Cara works with us at TMI, we'll come around and hand them out to you um, while I'm giving you the instructions. But the question that Bill put on the table earlier in his introduction is, what significant historical events happened in the 60s here in the Richmond region that need to be part of the way we tell the history of that era? Right? What is significant happened in Richmond from your perspective, from your knowledge, if you don't know, if you're like me, you were born after the 60s, you can just write down what your impressions are. Like, what, do you, what did you think of the decade? What, were your, what are your impressions? What are the stories you've heard? But if you know specific, significant events that happened in the 60s that need to be part of the way we tell our story of that decade, that's what we'd like to hear. And as Bill said, if there's objects or places that help tell that story, note that too. We're just inviting you to, to share with us the wisdom that you have about what happened in that decade here in the Richmond region that's significant. And actually, when you're um, done with your card, if you can hold it up in the air, because I'm going to collect them all. Um, and the card can help me with that as well. Maybe, yeah. Uh, right. Up. Here's what we're, we're going to have you do. We want to invite you to have a conversation with some other people about what your memories or impressions of the decade are. Right. So before we get to hear from um, our wonderful speaker, Dr. James, we want to learn a little about and all of his experiences. We want to learn about the experiences that are here in this room. But we want to do that um, actually breaking you up in groups based on the decades in which you were born. So. I want the um, folks who are born in the 80s or later, so our biggest group, I want you all to be a group, and we're going to invite you to go, um, if you walk out this door, um, head straight down the hall to the left, there's a, the gallery that has all of the tattoos, uh, <laughs> 80s, 90s, and later, y'all are going to, um, in just one minute, break out into a group there. Um, the 60s and 70s folks, um, y'all are going to be a group, and I'm going to have y'all come on, on this side, and then... Uh, 50s, 40s, 30s, earlier, y'all are going to be over here on this side. And then here's your instruction. Just share with each other. It's not a complicated conversation. Share with each other what are your impressions or memories of that decade. And you're, only, you're not going to have a facilitator because this isn't a complicated conversation. Your only instruction is share the airtime. Right? Make sure that one person doesn't dominate the whole thing. We're going to give y'all about 10 minutes or so to um, have this conversation. So uh, you may go ahead and break at this point, and then I'll round everybody up in about 10 minutes. We'll come back here. <laughs>